Welcome back to the Rising Star Podcast, live every month, every Friday. Just making sure you're aware of that. Fridays at 8 a.m. Central Center Time. Today, I'm going to talk about the phone, working the phone the right way. Okay, if you're working the phone for appointments and or if you're selling over the phone, you're going to love today's podcast. Here's what I want you to think about, okay? When you're working the phone, what are you saying? How are you saying it? When you're getting objections, how are you overcoming those? And really, when we talk about the phone and dialing and working leads and follow-up and calling at different times a day and scripting and texting and email and voicemail, all those things, okay? I'm going to cover all of those things today in detail and give it all away as a part of my book, Zero to Six Figures. So as we dive into this, we're back for our book series as we're walking through chapter five today, Working the Phone the Right Way. I only don't want you listening, but I can promise you, you're going to have some big takeaways, some big ideas, and some huge notes that come from listening to today's podcast. Okay, so also if you don't have my book, Zero to Six Figures, you can pick it up on Amazon. And it's how to go from zero to six figures, how to go from flat broke to earning over six figures per year, which I did at 20 while selling life insurance door to door. Okay, so here, chapter five. Chapter five, working the phone the right way. This next chapter is all about the basics of working the phone. I'm talking about being assumptive, using hypotheticals, finishing with the questions, using the leap of faith, trial closes, pivoting back into control, and leveraging the takeaway. There are a lot of great phone basics that you need to know. Everybody struggles with working the phone, but I'm gonna show you how to nail it. Phone versus in person. Whether you are working in the field, on the phone, you still need lead flow. Lead flow works in the field and it works on the phone too. First, you need to dial them. You can do this in several different ways. You can use a dialer or you can hand dial them. I know several agents who will make 40, 50K a month by hand dialing all their numbers. But you can't sell anything to anyone if they don't answer the phone. You need to talk to them. Be persistent by following up. I always recommend six calls in 72 hours. I like to utilize my 12-point follow-up system, which we will cover later. I also suggest calling with a different phone number alongside double and triple dialing that same person. So if it goes to a voicemail and they don't answer, you immediately dial back. This will increase your answer rate. Normally in the field, once you dial them and get an answer, you set an appointment. When doing telesales, when they answer the phone, you want to establish control just like with in-person or field sales. The first 30 seconds of being on the phone are critical for establishing control. You need to be in full control right out of the gate. Harvard Business Review says the first four to five seconds are so crucial. In the first four to five seconds, you've got to be in control. They have to be listening to me. People's attention spans are shorter than they ever used to be. Harvard Business Review says the first four to five seconds will make or break a call. So you've got to nail it. There are primary mistakes that you are making right now that you need to stop making. The number one mistake salespeople make over the phone are literally the first words they say in the introduction. A lot of agents have this really bad habit. And I used to have it too. This is how most of us were trained when someone you're calling picks up the phone. We say, hello, is this Betty? Or hello, are you Betty? Or hello, I'm looking for Betty. But no more. You can't do that anymore. Instead of the, instead is this, say, hello, Betty. It's more aggressive. It's more confident. It's a better approach and you will end up getting a better response. Think about this. When someone calls you and says, is this Cody? What do I say? Well, if I don't want to answer, no, you've got the wrong number. Or some version of this, your leads do the same thing if you don't call them out. You want to start your phone call with control and confidence. This is the key. Only use your first name. No last name, no company name. You think it's weird, right? Dude, it's weird that you do it. I used to make the same mistake. When I started as an intern, I was calling for a veteran agent, literally flipping through the phone book, cold calling. I didn't realize it back then, but I was making some bad mistakes and not nailing the first 30 seconds. When you don't know the first 30 seconds, this gives people the chance to interject and take control. Then you get the following, who is this? Why are you calling me? I didn't ask you to call me. It gives them a chance to interject and throw an objection early in the call. In the first 30 seconds, you can't allow objections to come up. You have to establish control of the call immediately. Instead, start your call like this. I'm calling about the state approved exp expense program. I'm the licensed underwriter that's here to help. Now tell me this, then ask a question and take control. Taking control early in the call, it will make the rest of the call go that much smoother. But if you don't get under control, 
and get their attention immediately within the first five seconds or within the first 60, then you're going to struggle with the rest of the sale. If you're practicing a portion of the call, this is the portion that you need to practice the most and get your script down. Before you get on your calls, practice your first 60 seconds of your script. After you've gained control, work on qualifying them. You should be able to do that in the first three minutes of the call. Focus on building rapport, fact finding, and then you'll present, close, and cool down off of the business. When you think about your current model from filled to telesales, they don't differ that much. Both have lead flow, you dial them, they answer, but in field sales, your next step is setting an in-person appointment. When you show up for that appointment, you build rapport, fact find, present, close, cool down. Your average field appointment is 45 to 60 minutes long. Telesales are the same. But you just do it over the phone. If you've dialed them and in, in the answer, you'll start on building rapport, fact finding to qualify them. You'll then present, close, and cool down off of business. But if you're just transitioning to telesales, it will take some time. It won't be an immediate sell, but keep the faith. Most people jump from filled to working the phone under the impression that they might be able to qualify their prospect quicker. Agents end up thinking it will be quicker, simpler, and easier, when in fact, getting them to buy over the phone is harder than face-to-face. -face. Over the phone, it takes them longer to know, like, and trust you. Just take your time over the phone and build rapport. Tips for working leads. When it comes to great leads, you want multiple avenues to generate those leads. I'm talking digital, direct mail, video strategies, seminars, webinars. I think you get the point. My friend and partner, Landon, who is a marketing genius, and I worked very hard to create our company's creative marketing. Our company is an actual insurance marketing agency that has worked in the insurance industry. Simply put, we understand the language and we know how you prospects, how your prospects search for insurance solutions. Because of this, we generate leads through various social media platforms. Not only that, but we create beautiful websites to drive traffic and content creation to drive brand awareness. Check us out at securitymarketing.com to see how we can help you generate more leads. We're already here to help you get leads through every means possible. But once you have the leads, closing the sale is up to you. This is something a lot of agents struggle with, but don't worry, I have a, created a proven system to help you do this. 12-point follow-up system. In this 12-point system, we work leads in three different ways. By calling them, texting, and emailing them, we call leads six times in three days. Calling a lead six times gives you a 90% chance of contacting them. Remember, you can't sell anything if you don't set an appointment, and you can't set an appointment if you don't talk to them. So, suck it up and make some calls. A lot of agents struggle with getting in front of people. They don't know how to properly reach out to their contacts and leads. Oftentimes, agents will buy shared leads. Shared leads can be shared with a minimum of eight other agents. If you don't know when to touch them, how often to touch them, then leads are for nothing. Dude, you pay for leads. If this is you, I'm going to give you my three-day 12-point follow-up system for working leads. I set up my follow-up to touch my leads 12 times within 72 hours. Now, I'm not saying I don't want to follow up next week or two weeks from now or keep trying to door knock them after the first 72 hours because I do still follow up and work the lead after the first 12 touches. But what I do is on day one, the very first day, I want you to call your lead three times by phone. Send one text and an email. Leave one voicemail. So the very first day, I want you to call them three times. I want you to text, email, and I want you to leave a voicemail. Day number two, I want you to make two calls. You will see a pattern that goes three, two, one. Make, so make two calls, one text, one email, one voicemail. Day number three, you guessed it. One call, one text, one email, and a voicemail. So if you add all those up, three calls, a text, and email, that's five touches on day one. Day two, two calls, a text, email, that's four touches on day two. Jump to nine touches in the first 48 hours. Day three, one call, text, email, for three total touches. Now you're at 12 total touches in your first 72 hours of receiving a lead. And you say, well, dude, how, why would you do that? You might even be thinking, saying, I'm used to calling someone one time or maybe emailing them one time. That is probably why your leads are not working for you, especially if you're buying shared leads. 80% of sales are made between the fifth and 12th contact. And why do we want to do halfway do anything if you know that 12 touches will get results 80% of the time? See my point? Do the 12 touches if you want to see the results. And also, I don't want to wait and I don't want to spread this out over multiple weeks. The tendency is that when someone responds that they want information, generally, they may not buy from the first or second person who reaches out to them, but they're going to buy it from someone. And even if it is an exclusive lead, the chances are that over half of them are thinking about buying insurance. They might respond to a phone call, a television commercial, direct mail form, digitally online, or through a referral from a friend. The point is, when you have the opportunity to exhaust a lead you paid for that asks for you to reach out to them ASAP, let's exhaust our leads. Calling at different times of the day. If you're only calling one time during the day and you're not getting a hold of anyone, guess what? 
it might not be available then, so try calling at various times during the day and different times of the week, different days of the week. This one is very straightforward, but if you do this, it can double your chances of making contact. What happens when we make contact? We set an appointment or make a sell. No contact, no sell. It's as simple as that. Triple dialing, different numbers and scripting. When you call and they don't answer, hang up and call again. When they see the same number calling twice in a row, it increases the chance they'll pick up the phone. If they don't answer the second time, you can always call one more time. The third time, be sure to leave a voicemail on your third call. If you have not made contact with the number you're using, use a different number. Try implementing this in your regular follow-up routine as many people won't answer if the number is not from their area code. I know this seems simple enough, but not all agents are doing this free and simple tip. Most are not. Once they've answered the phone, I utilize my script and begin rapport building and fact finding by asking open-ended questions. Don't follow your script word for word. Make sure to practice, role play, and make it your own. Interject your personality into it. If it's personal to you, they will feel it. But if you aren't rehearsed and practiced, the second you pause, you're dead in the water. Texting, emailing, and voicemail. We covered this in detail in chapter three, but I want to remind you again here, using a quick question, it's especially great when texting. Good news works well when sending an email and drop off is great for voicemail. Add these quick tips alongside your script to increase your answer rate. Other tips, assume one of the basics is being very assumptive. Always assume. You must assume everything. Assume the sell every step of the way. It is basic and the most elementary of basics of working the phone. You have to assume they are going to answer the phone. You have to assume they're going to love you. You're gonna, you got to assume they are going to talk to you for an hour. Assume they're going to buy. Assume they're going to pay you right now. You've got to assume they will keep the policy for every day until they pass away. You have to assume everything because I'm telling you, if you don't assume it, they never will. That is the key behind this. Sales are, I believe, that you are going to buy more than they believe that you're not going to. That is being assumptive. How assumptive are you? You have to assume everything. You have to assume when you ask a question that they are going to answer. Assume they are going to love what you are pitching them. They are on board and ready to roll. They love it. They love you and they want to do it now. You just have to assume it all. Here are some examples of this. I'm assuming that you're that you've loved everything we talked about here, correct? That's a confident answer. It's assuming. What happens is if you don't believe they like it and that they are going to move forward with it, they definitely won't. You got to believe it more than they do. And generally, whosoever belief is higher wins. They also say sell or be sold. You're either selling or you're getting sold. So take it a step further. I believe in being more sold on my product and their decision than they are. And when you believe they will make a decision and buy more than they believe that they won't by assuming, then guess what? You end up getting people to make decisions you never would have before. Some example questions you, using assume and getting to make a decision. I'm assuming you like this so far. Am I right? I'm assuming you like to move forward with this, correct? I'm sure you can agree that this is perfect for you. You know what I mean? Have you heard enough to make a decision? Then you have the power of either or. It is less of an ultimatum. If you say, hey, would you want to buy $20,000? They say, no. But if you say, hypothetically, if you had to choose between going with 15 or 20,000, hypothetically, right? 15 or 20,000. The power of the either or gives them options. People like options. They don't like to buy when you put them in a corner, right? When you say, here is your option. This is all you get. No, people like options. They like to feel like they are at least making the decision on their own. If you give them an option, you're making the decision for them. If you give them two options, guess what? They are making the decision for themselves. And they're believing and owning what you're about to say because they said it, not you. Finish with a question. The next basic of working the phone tips is you have to finish with a question. 100% of the time on the phone, I'm finishing with a question. We've talked about control earlier, which is a part of working the phone. You must be in control, and the best way to be in control is to ask questions. You must always ask a question. It's human nature. I want to ask you a question. To do what? To answer the question. So why don't we ask more questions? I always finish with a question. This is difficult. A lot of salespeople make this really hard, but it's really simple. Once you get good at this, it's great. But it is hard to always finish with a question on the phone. It is difficult. It's not natural or normal, but once you adopt it and you get good at it, it's amazing how good you can get at maintaining control of the entire call. You end up closing 30 to 40% of good conversations by being in control. I will always finish with a question 100% of the time. 
I do not let my salespeople speak over the phone unless they finish with a question because it keeps them in control and moves the needle. I do not believe in making statements unless I finish with the question. This makes it takes a lot of really honing in, personalizing, and making it your own. This is something you need to be role playing with every single day to get better. If you're going to be good on the phone, you need to finish with your statements by asking a question. It keeps you in control. It makes your belief higher than theirs. Always finish with a question. The follow-up question makes it seem like it is more important for them to answer, but also gives them time to think of a response. So in that instance, I ask a follow-up question, which most agents never do. Always ask a follow-up question if you don't get the answer that you want. Or if they say, I don't know, or no, or I'm not sure, or I don't really know. Ask a follow-up question to get the answer that you know is there. Another question I do when I'm driving around my neighborhood, if I see my neighbors outside, I wave at them. If they don't wave back, I will literally stop my car and continue to wave at them until they wave back. This is because I've trained myself to always get answers to my questions. Using hypotheticals works like crazy by always asking a follow-up question. So I'm asking someone, which option looks like it'll be best for you? Well, I don't know. Well, if you had to look at them and choose, what would you say? Then they answer. It is powerful. It's amazing. It works. And most people are not doing it. Most people don't know about this. Use hypotheticals. Always ask a follow-up question. Always get answers to every question you ask. Pivoting back into control. Now let's talk about the pivot and pivoting back into control. Imagine you're at the beginning of a path or a road and you need to get to the finish. If you're on this path with them and they give you an objection or they ask a question, think of them as taking you off the path. And the only way for you to get them to the finish line is to pivot them back on the path, pivoting back into control. If they tell you that they are interested in the cost of the product and they aren't sure they can afford it, tell them, of course, I'm totally with you. Follow that with a great question and then promise that you'll get back to their questions in a bit. Here, you'll want to pivot back into control and say, tell me this, one of the things we need to know to determine how much this is, is going to understand your health. So how is your health? Have you had any heart attack, stroke, cancer? Talk to me about your health. Do you take any medications? Right here is pivoting back into control. You're getting back on path to move closer to the finish line. When they try to derail, I want you to pivot back onto the path to the finish line and pivot back into control. I love using hypotheticals. Take them to a hypothetical state. For instance, I love saying the word hypothetically. If you ask your wife, what do you want to do this weekend? It's a stupid thing to ask because you already know the answer. And it's, I don't know. Then you follow up with, oh, okay, well, hypothetically, if you had to choose, this is a running joke around the office because we all use it. What would you say? Hypothetically, if you had to choose, what would you say? Then they stop and think. And they always answer the question. You are used to getting, I don't know, you're used to getting pushed off. You're used to getting unsure answers or responses of, well, I'm not really sure. I use this all facets of my life. And by adding hypothetically, if you had to choose, what would you say? What do you mean if you had to choose? You're making them choose right now, but you're saying hypothetically, if you had to choose, you don't have to, you don't have to, but if you had to, what would you say? And then they choose. You didn't see, you didn't say they had to choose, but they're going to because it works. The takeaway. The basic, this basic working the phone tip is so good. It's powerful, it's incredible, and it drives people nuts. And that is the takeaway close. When you're in the middle of a cell, you wanna take control and get their attention, use the takeaway. I love doing this early in the call. This is a state approved filing expense program that is meant for people just like you. However, I don't know if you'll be able to qualify. It is my job as your local food underwriter to ask the questions necessary to see if you may be able to. A lot of people can't get it, but they wish they could. Hopefully you'll be able to today. So I'm going to ask you some questions and go over everything because again, I don't know if you'll qualify. Are you with me? This is the takeaway close. And that's a very specific example of the takeaway. People move towards things that move away from them. So every once in a while, if you're in a spot where you're stuck, try this close. As a result of you moving the product away from them, it will make them want it more. That is one that you'll want to practice so that when you roll this out, to your tool belt, you're prepared and ready to go. I don't know if you'll be able to get it, but I'm hoping you can. So tell me this and ask a question. 
use that throughout the call because it's going to drive them nuts. Remember, people move closer to things, move away from them. The takeaway will take it away so they move closer. You want to be a great salesperson. And to do that, you have to be good at working the phone and face-to-face. But for you to sell anything, you have to speak to people. Remember, when working leads, make sure you get in your 12 touches from my 12-point follow-up system. This is 12 touches over three days via phone call, email, and text. Remember to call at different times of the day. Don't be afraid to triple dial and try to call from a different number. Once you have them on the phone, remember to always be assumptive. Assume they'll answer the phone. Assume they'll love you. Assume they're going to buy from you. Always, always, always finish with a question. Remember, how wave at my neighbors? Finish with a question is a fantastic way to get these trial closes or soft closes in throughout the appointment. Whenever you feel like the prospect has taken over the appointment, pivot back into control and try the takeaway to keep them engaged and moving toward you. If you do these things, you'll be killing it in no time. Okay, so we just went over chapter five, which is from page 42 through 54. Okay, 13 total pages. And we did that in about, eh, I would say about 18 minutes of total reading, about another three minutes at the beginning. Okay, if you do not have this book, Zero to Six Figures, it will teach you how to consistently make over six figures per year, right? Or your agents need it. Get it for your whole office, buy it for your whole team. Don't you think about, here's what I want you to take away from today. Okay, you had a lot of notes, we got a lot of ideas, and I covered a lot of incredible sales information. I want you to choose three things from today's lesson, and I want you to circle them. And then I want you to organize them from priority, one, two, three. And those three things, I want you to choose. Here's what I'm gonna get good at first, then I'm gonna get good at this, then I'm gonna apply this, right? And then I want you to go and apply three things to your phone, and sales process, in person, over the phone, whatever, to help you get better at working the phone the right way. It's exactly how you're gonna go from zero to six figures. It's exactly how you can get better at the phone. It's exactly how you can get better at sales. It's by choosing what you get better at and then deciding to go get better at it. Also, if you love what I talk about and you wanna talk to our team about how we can help you get better at all this or help your team get better at all this or help you recruit salespeople or train salespeople or whatever, Go to CodyAskins.com forward slash call to book a call with me to talk about how you can get better at all this. Okay, thanks for listening to Rising Star and we'll see you on the next one. How many clients do you have? Uh, We're close to about 3,000 clients. 3,000? Yeah. If you had to start over today, okay, you had to completely start over, how fast could you get back to 3,000 clients with what you know today? What I know today, maybe three years. Wow. Four years. <laughs>